Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, folks. How are you doing today? As mentioned in the daily financial news this morning, we have the one and only Greg Dickerson. And as you see, he is mobile. He is out doing deals, man. How are you doing, Greg? I'm doing great, Michael. How about you? Oh, I'm doing really, really well. I look forward to these conversations. Monday with Michael, as we say, kind of pre wall That is awesome. It makes me feel Mondays so good. Mondays with Michael. Yeah, yeah. And I just, yeah, I was just wrapping up a meeting and, uh, you know, pulled out to the parking lot. And here we are. There you go. I love it. Uh, thank you for giving this hour every week. Uh, you know, we've been doing this, I think, a year and a half now. So you do have a playlist on my channel. Link below. Uh, I'd be shocked if it's not over 100 of hours of us talking about different things, real estate. So thank you so much. Real estate, economy, finance, it's a lot of fun. Oh, absolutely. Well, one of the things I wanted to talk to you about today, because again, I I went back and listened to our first discussion, you know, truck in a toolbox. And, you know, one of the things that you did is you built homes. Now they were spec homes on the water and, and all of that, but still you're a builder. I've never built anything. I'm actually in the very early stages of building an ADU right now. Uh, but, you know, we have, I think we have a housing crisis, depending on who you talk to or watch, right? There's somewhere between a million and 6 million units we haven't built the last decade, right? Because the builders kind of pulled back pretty hard. We obviously have an affordability crisis, which seems to be getting worse, meaning less and less people can afford the average home. Uh, so there's a lot going on. Uh, as a builder, do you see it as a housing crisis? Uh, you know, what are your thoughts when you hear housing crisis? What, what does that mean to you? Depends on who you're talking to, because there's always two sides to every story. And yeah. if you bought a house in the last three to five or even seven to 10 years, you're doing pretty darn good right now. Because actually, you know, if we go back 10 years, what is this, 2021, 2011? So, you know, housing bottomed, you know, after 2009, 10. So 11, 12 started picking back yeah. up. We finally got back to 0405 levels, probably 2017, 18. So, yeah, if you bought any time after 2009, yeah. You know, uh, let's just say 2010 on, you've done extremely well. Your house oh. has gone up probably 50% in some areas. And in the last, you know, three, you know, two, three years, you've gone up 20 to 30%. So there's no crisis there for those people. Yeah. Now if you're a buyer and you're trying to get a house and you're getting beat out by multiple bids, multiple offers. I just helped one of my closest friends um, buy a house over the weekend. I don't do like general real estate, but yeah, I helped my mom with her house and her neighbor. And now I'm helping my friend and he was with seven offers. And, you know, we ended up winning the bid because of the way we presented the offer and everything. And uh, now he's going to sell his house and, you know, same thing. So from that standpoint, from a buying perspective, you're paying all time highs. Mm -hmm. There's very competitive, there's limited inventory, uh, but the interest rates are so cheap. I mean, you're still sub 3% for a 30 year mortgage. Yeah. It's, it's kind of, a, so, you know, I think, I think when you say housing crisis, that means that there's a lack of affordability in housing for the average individual, mm -hmm. school teacher, firefighter, police officer, um, you know, uh, and your hourly workers, service workers, you know, individuals like that. In a lot of areas, there's even lack of rental mm -hmm. um, housing in a lot of areas as well. So, so there is an issue of affordability. There's an issue of, um, you know, inventory. And, you, you know, you have to qualify for a mortgage nowadays versus, you know, yeah. 2008, pre-2009, it was a little easier. Nowadays, it's more difficult. You got to have that down payment. You got to qualify. There are programs, incentives, and assistance for first-time home buyers and things like that. But um, you, so I, I would say there is a problem and construction affordability has not come down yet. So we're still seeing all-time highs, even though lumber's come down, nothing else came down. Yeah, with it. yeah. expensive. Yeah, so I, it was, I love talking to you because you're a builder. You 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 took you took raw land and made something. It's just a, it's a part of the market I've never done, and it's 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 going to be an experience to go through the first time for sure. Uh, the one thing I want I knew I wanted to ask you about is, you know, construction costs are are you know building something is expensive. Well, we're not only talking the the raw material, right? The lumber, the copper, the pipes, all of that, but just the permitting. Uh, the drawings, like, for example, I'm trying to build an ADU on a lot in California, which is supposed to be easy to do now. Um, so far, I spent 1500 bucks getting a site plan um, created and ultimately getting approved by the city. So we got the thumbs up. Now it looks like I might be spending somewhere between six and 10 grand getting the architectural drawing and going through that whole process. Again, never done this. Don't know if that's expensive or not. Uh, but it's just like, man, I could be into this thing. I don't know, 11 grand. And I haven't even moved an ounce of dirt yet. Uh, there's, yeah. there's a lot of things that uh, just make, you know, building a home expensive. 
yeah, the ADU, and then it's going to cost you, depending on what you're building, 50 to 70 to 100 grand just to build the ADU. But yep. the drawings, depending on what you're talking about exactly, sound a little expensive for mm -hmm. architecturals. But I don't know what the requirements are yeah. in California from structural engineering, seismic, you know, soils engineering, all that kind of stuff. So I, I don't know what's required there. But generally, for most residential structures, you can get something done for like a buck to two bucks a square foot in terms of drawings. But okay. then you got to have the engineering and all that on top of it. So, uh, you know, I don't know. Yeah, that sounds I, a little high for an ADU. Yeah, so I'm I'm pushing back on that. But that was the quote I got over the weekend. Uh, I have somebody I'm working with who's done a, a couple, so I'm like, hey, what's this about? So just to just to close that out, so people may ask me, it's a 1,250 square foot, which is the maximum size for an ADU. It actually fits on the land. It's a three bedroom, two bath uh, house, right? Freestanding house. So that's okay. what ultimately we'd be built, but. Yeah. So, you know, 2,500 bucks for drawings, you know, maybe another thousand for engineering, your civil site work, you know, plans and all that are probably $1,500 surveys and all the stuff you're going to need there. So yeah, you probably spend, you know, five to 7,500, you know, okay. anything above that sounds a little high. Okay. Well, thank you for that. I will let you know, and I will push back because my expert said so, but the, really well, I, some quotes. Yeah. I, again, I'm, I'm, Again, the whole idea here is I think I can build this thing, this place for under 120 grand once I get to, I have the team that does the construction already in my network. I just don't have the drawing and that, that experience. But where I'm yeah, going- that with, sounds cheap for California as well. I, you know, I would think you're going to be 150 bucks a square foot for a three bedroom, two bath. Yeah, we'll see. But that's what they're telling me. Well, they're going to do it anyways. Well, uh, I will be open and honest with as we go through this. Uh, but yeah, it's uh, the thing that I was really thinking about wanting to ask you is I, some- I've done very little research. Actually, one of my experts that I talked to on Tuesday has done more, but he's actually looking at 3D printed houses, you know, basically mm -hmm. little, you know, one bedroom, two bath or one bedroom or two bedroom, real small footprints. Have you ever looked into that? Cause that at least seems like a cheaper way to build houses, less creativity. Yeah. You and I talked about that and there was one done in New Jersey or Pennsylvania. I think that was yeah. the first one that was done for sale. There's some in Texas, but Mm -hmm. There was one um, I saw it on the news this weekend that's in process in Richmond, Virginia, which is an hour from me. So okay. I'm going to go do a site visit and make ah. a video um, about that this week. It's being done by um, a housing authority there, like I oh, cool. like, um, can't remember what it is, Virginia Department of Housing or somebody's doing it as a test. Yeah. So for rental purposes, it's fantastic. I mean, from what I'm hearing, it's about 50% of the cost and, you know, a third of the amount of time to get it done. Um, you know, not everybody wants a concrete house because it's all your interior, exterior walls, everything. So it's a little different from that standpoint in terms of the way you finish the interior, but you can, sure. you know, you can still drywall the interior if you want to and frame it out. But yeah, I think if you have that abil ability in your area to do it, I think it's a fantastic idea. And um, it would be something that would be a lot of fun to explore, but yeah, I want to make a video on that. That's awesome. I look forward to that. We'll talk about it next week or the week after. Uh, but yeah, I, I just think, I mean, you can, attack, you can tackle housing affordability lots of different ways. Um, yeah. and one of them is with supply, right? It, again, um, if your local government wanted to, they could create incentives to really increase that. And frankly, we're talking about a big ass monster infrastructure bill coming out of the federal government. Why don't they throw some money at really creating more and more 3d companies because my limited research there's only a couple of them they're rather limited right physically moving the equipment is not easy um, it's new uh yeah new technology you're limited in terms of yeah the footprint of the mechanism of the of the of the, the system, square yeah. you know so yeah it, it only goes so wide but you can go deep so you got to move it around a little bit there's one that has an arm that kind of pivots mm. you know from a center and you you know builds it in an arc oh, circle wow. circular type thing it doesn't build a circular house, but the arm yeah. swings so it can draw whatever, you know, mm -hmm. in that 360 degree radius. But so entitlement is is a big issue. So permit cost, impact fees, you know, all that kind of stuff is out of control in a lot of areas. And I mean, if you're trying to build an affordable house for a couple hundred grand, that could be 10, 15, 20 grand just for permitting in some areas. Yeah, that's what I was Site trying to get can to. get yeah. expensive. Yeah. And then exactly. the issues that you've got with 3D printed houses in California specifically is seismic, you know, your yeah. earthquake and your structural in other areas, it's wind loads, but concrete usually satisfies it. So there's engineering in process. There is a company, there's a couple of companies out West that are doing it. So I think you can, you can find more information on that. 
And then to infrastructure. So in that plan, one of the big issues, you know, we're going to talk about inflation, I think on another video mm -hmm. is that's going to create even more pressure on yeah. construction materials, you concrete, think, yeah. steel, you know, um, all of the materials that go into that or infrastructure. I mean, if you all of a sudden go out and spend, you know, I don't even know what they're looking at now, but let's say you spend $500 billion on, you know, roads and bridges and that's concrete, steel, this, that, and the other that all of a sudden, you know, is going to put an even, you know, pressured supply chain, put even more pressure on it. And we all, we have um, issues in the supply chain with the, you know, the new COVID variant that's popping up mm -hmm. in a lot of countries that are, that are creating supply chain issues. Um, the Delta variant, it's starting to pop up in this country. So we're not done with the pandemic yet. Mm -hmm. And, um, you know, a lot of people in this country haven't been vaccinated. But we've got a lot of pain coming with that Delta variant still. Oh, man. Uh, yeah, it's, uh, this, this year's not over. We're, we're not behind this. But that's really where I wanted to get to with the housing crisis, right? I, I really, because people use that tagline and you really got to scratch what they're talking about, right? There's the supply side is just too expensive to build affordable homes. I think there are engineering and smart people trying to tackle that. I, I think we could push more money and, you know, more ass or resources that direction, i.e. 3D homes or whatever the next version of that is. Uh, and then it's the affordability. So for me as a builder that has looked at this issue over the years, yes. I think 3D printed homes are the solution because the, the data is there. They're building these houses nice. um, in a matter of, you know, a fraction of the time, quarter to a third of the time it takes for traditional construction. It's coming in at half the cost. Number. You're eliminating um, all of the labor involved in drilling out studs and all that for running your mechanicals because mm -hmm. you're putting in chases for everything to go through in the walls so i think that is the best solution because it's the technology is getting better and literally what you're doing is you're setting up an ipad on site you're printing out a 1200 square foot house in a couple of days literally yeah. it's two guys with this rig takes them a couple of days and then your trades come in behind you you know the roofs are still you know wood at this point mm -hmm. which eventually that'll all be concrete as well but it's um better for the environment it's um you know, fireproof, windproof, you know, I mean, there's just so many advantages to concrete over, you know, traditional wood framing, systems built houses, modular homes, manufactured homes, things like that. You know, those are, you know, logistics, transportation, labor to get that done, because you're still building a house, stick built house, you're just mm -hmm. doing it in the factory. Mm -hmm. There's a lot of issues there. And those aren't any cheaper at the end of the day. Yeah. They just can be a little quicker. But when you add the lead time in, that you need to uh, to order one, there it's really not even that much faster. Wow. And then the other angle of a, a housing crisis is affordability. And that's something that's been yeah. important to me because it's really told me when to get in and get in and get out of markets. But when you think of an owner occupant, uh, you know, having, you know, to get into a market that's getting less and less affordable, um, you know, this, this, we, we need more housing. We need cheaper housing, right? The affordable housing stock is be, is going away. You know, Wall Street now has identified affordable homes as a great way to make money, right? They're chasing yield. Um, so when I look at housing affordability, it, it should be the kind of the number one thing we think about for the next decade or so. I mean, we, we have the technology. Um, we need more, right? Again, I, I was listening to Lennar, CEO, talk about, you know, the industry being somewhere between a million and six million short of single family homes. You know, there, there are ways around it. Uh, we just need to decide and, and go that direction, I think. Yeah, and we need more labor. So right now, yeah. you know, builders, you know, you can't build fast enough because you can't get the labor. You can't get the help. The supply chain is still constrained. That's going to change. That will open back up. But then, yeah. you know, once the supply chain is open back up, you still don't have the labor because, right. you know, the, the number one problem I hear from subcontractors out there is a lot of the, you know, older guys are retiring. They have nobody coming up behind them. You know, the the small plumbing shops, the small HVAC shops, the small framing crews, you know, those guys are aging out and there's nobody coming up behind them. Wow. Um, and, uh, you know, we now with the immigration, um, you know, stance that the United States has taken, we've shut that door off and we're really, you know, deporting people and all that. I mean, that was a big part of the construction labor force that now is gone. Mm -hmm. um, so, you know, it's really difficult right now. And for anybody watching, I tell you, you can, you can do really well as a trades contractor in the mechanical trades, you know, plumbing, HVAC, electrical, those things. And, you know, construction is cyclical. So that's a problem mm -hmm. where people, you know, you may be out of work in six months if, you know, if construction market changes and things like that. But if you're a trades contractor like that, you, there's always work because it's maintenance calls, service yeah. calls, things like that. So, I mean, you can make a couple hundred grand a year as a small owner operated trades contractor. A lot of people don't realize that. 
Wow. And, um, you know, you need the training, you need the skills, but you know, your average plumber, electrician, HVAC that owns their own company, you know, they're making at least 200,000 or more a year. Wow. Um, framing contractors, drywall contractors, painters, you know, you can make a couple hundred grand a year as a painting contractor, roofing contractor, and not have a huge operation, you know, just a small crew or two, you know, that's, that's, you know, totally, totally doable. So, um, you know, but people just don't want to do it. They don't want to go into the trades and, hmm. Uh, I don't know why, you know, other than maybe they want more tech jobs and, you know, as more as we, you know, get more advanced from a technology standpoint, there's more jobs, more opportunities there, but um, it's, it's really interesting times. Yeah. This has been a great conversation. Yes. And topic number two, we are going to talk about fed and inflation. I look forward to that. How can people get a part of your world? Yep. GregDickerson.com. All of my info is there. I have a YouTube channel. Just look up Greg Dickerson on YouTube. I should pop up me and a sportscaster. That's probably the only two things you're going to see. <laughs> That's great. You got to follow Mr. Greg Dickerson. He's doing a lot of great stuff out there. Thanks, buddy. All righty.